So, a while ago I posted a video that to date is probably the most hated and disliked video that I've ever uploaded, but you know, I'm okay with that. You know, free speech for you guys and what I feel is an honest opinion from myself. I'm of course talking about my Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 to 40 review and how my unit had some issues along with how I thought it happened. Right here, All right? Let me cut to the chase. Many of you thought that I was wrong and I respect those opinions, but I also stand by my original review as an accurate representation of my experiences with the cooler. That said, given that most other outlets and YouTubers had good experiences with the cooler as well as you guys constantly giving me, you know, crap about it, I needed to find out the truth. Was this a design flaw or did I just have a dud? So I reached out to Arctic again, I sent them the uh, close-ups of these damages and without much hesitation, they offered me a replacement unit free of charge. So credit given where credit is due then, I have to give it to Arctic support team for being straight up awesome. A couple of months, some shipping delays and a global pandemic later, <laughs> well, the new unit from Arctic is here. Now the first thing that caught my eye was the slight differences in the boxes and packaging to the one that I have. Upon closer inspection, the box on the new unit that I received says revision 2 down at the bottom near the serial number and indeed examining the two, there are some noticeable differences between the unit that I have and the replacement unit. Before I run through the differences between the two though, I think many of you are interested to know whether I ran into any issues with this new replacement unit and I am happy to say that the answer is no. I tried side mounting it in my case as per before and it worked perfectly fine with the fans on the radiator and the pump block spinning up properly, but for the purposes of benchmarking, I will instead test it with the rad outside the system with the tubes facing downwards. This is of course because of the video by Gamers Nexus about how the orientation of the AIOs matter and so in order to properly and fairly re-benchmark this CPU cooler, I set it up as such. In order to fairly compare it with my reigning champion, the Segotep Biku 240 RGB, I'm going to be using the same Arctic P12 PWM fans on it as well. Here's my system specifications and take note of this, especially the motherboard as this will be important in the discussion later. The results are super unexpected but interesting, so strap in. Let's start with the temperature results, first with Cinebench R20. The Arctic Liquid Freezer 2240 Revision 2 does very well to keep the CPU cool, however, it still finds itself outdone by the Segotep BQ240 even with the same fans attached to that. We see the same story in the Blender BMW benchmark where by the end, the BQ240 was about 7 Celsius cooler than the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 240. Finally, in a longer benchmark with the Blender Classroom Render, the BQ240 was at the end about 3 Celsius cooler than the Liquid Freezer 2 240. Now at this point, I think many of you would think that in all of the benchmarks, the Segotep cooler that I was originally using scored better right? <laughs> no, not at all. In fact, in all of the benchmarks, the Arctic Liquid Fisa 2240 scored higher with consistently about 30 points higher in Cinebench R20, consistent 3 seconds faster in the Blender BMW benchmark, and consistently about 6 seconds faster in the Blender Classroom Render benchmark. This all might not make much sense, but I think I know the answer as to why it's happening and the secret lies within the little fan on the pump block. You see, the motherboard that I'm using, the ASUS B450F Strix, isn't particularly great when it comes to the VRM solution and as such, they're very prone to overheating, especially when paired with such a high-powered CPU like the 3700X. You can kind of see where this is going then. Despite the hotter CPU temperatures that I was getting, the little fan on the pump block of the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 was actually getting my VRMs cooler, allowing the 3700X to perform better consistently in all of the benchmarks. In fact, I noticed this the moment that I set Cinebench R20 to run for about 6 minutes non-stop. 
While the Biku 240 would start to get lower and lower scores with each consecutive run, the Liquid Freezer 2 240 just remained consistent throughout, with the scores hardly changing at all. This makes the Liquid Freezer 2 a very interesting choice for people with motherboards with not necessarily very good VRM cooling as unlike every other cooler on the market, it can help you to get and achieve better performance by keeping your board's VRMs cooler. Does that mean that the Arctic cooler is better than? I don't think that the answer is as straightforward. You see, for people like me who have boards with bad VRM cooling or maybe a case or setup with limited airflow over the VRMs, then I think that the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 is definitely the better solid choice. And in fact, moving forward, this is going to be the cooler that I'm going to be using in my system. Okay? However, if you're someone with a good motherboard that is capable of keeping the VRMs cool by itself, the performance that you can get out of the Sagotep BQ 240 is still better and impressive in terms of getting the CPU itself cooler as it really just straight up outperforms the Arctic cooler in that despite having a slimmer radiator. Now, while I am happy that the uh, findings that I have are now very much in line with what other YouTubers are getting, I am also extremely curious as to what has changed between my faulty revision 1 and the newer revision 2 and whether any of these changes fixed the issue that I was having in the original. I asked Arctic over on their Twitter account to which they replied me this, but I noticed several other things that have changed as well. We'll start off first with the pump block. We immediately see printing and marking differences on the plastic housing of the pump block, but looking above, we can also see that the cable for the tiny VRM fan that was previously a plug header directly soldered onto the PCB is now a cable with the plug now in line with the cable with slight differences in the routing as well. Removing the screws for the plastic housing of the PCB, we can see that that has changed as well in a rather big way in fact, as not only is the colour of the PCB different from green to black, the board layout is also completely different which is super interesting and the little foam to dampen any extra noise is now glued to the PCB instead of the plastic housing. Before we move on, I was also curious to know if anything on the inside of the block itself had changed and so I removed the copper coat plate from both the coolers to compare them and it looks like nothing had changed, so that's not much of a surprise. We move on to the tubes where it looks like nothing has changed as well and finally onto the radiators and while the fan and the radiator itself haven't changed at all, what I found particularly interesting were the fan cables that run out of the tubes not only being substantially longer than before, now terminating at the middle and at the end of both fans instead of at the top and at the middle before, but also routed on the right instead of the left of the tubes. There is also a lot more slack in the cables than before and bear in mind that in the first video that I did, I mentioned that one of the reasons why I felt the original Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 failed was due to the lack of slack in the cables. Now of course, I can't really tell you guys if this is what made the revision 2 work for me, but what I do know is that with this change in the design, I didn't have any issues anymore. Aside from those as per the tweet, Arctic also includes extra screws now to facilitate in a pool configuration should you choose to mount the cooler that way. It's now easier to unplug the VRM fan if you want to do that. And the reported RPM value is now for the radiator fans. <laughs> Honestly, this has been a very interesting revisit and I'm very thankful that I managed to do it and discover all of these interesting bits. Huge thanks to Arctic for sending me another unit you guys are the best. Let me know what you guys think about the updated findings. Did you expect the results at all? Honestly, the results for me were just a little bit shocking because it basically comes down to if you're someone who is uh, you know, rocking a good board with a proper VRM setup, then a really good cooler like the Segotep 240 here will do you well. But if you have a board like mine that leaves so much to be desired in terms of the VRM performance, then the Liquid Freezer 2 will definitely help out in inching out the most performance out of your system, especially in longer workloads. 
It's precisely because of this that I will be using it in my main system. That's it for this video. If you like to get one for yourself, then you can check out my links down in the description below. Uh, do the YouTube thing of uh, liking it if you liked it. Drop your comments down below, sharing it if you found my test findings and results interesting. And don't forget to uh, subscribe. <laughs> don't forget. <laughs> don't forget to subscribe for more honest content like this one. And uh, oh, uh, don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified for when any of my new videos go live. My name is Yang, the tech rodent, and uh, different tools for different occasions is basically what it comes down to. I will catch you guys in the next video. Oh, and one more thing. For those of you in uh, Malaysia right now, today is the 31st of August, and so I'd like to say Selamat Hari Merdeka. Cheers, guys. <laughs>